Hey, welcome back. We got a knife here. You're gonna have to bear with me as this thing's got a pretty crazy tape job on it. It was shipped internationally. Let me just uh, do some of this off the screen if you don't mind. I'll serenade you with my wonderful voice, of course. There we go. All right, we got that out of the way. This is in from Grambo Knives in Australia by way of Best Tech, if you're familiar. And they right now are doing, in my opinion, some of the best work. And, uh, oh yeah, I just think that even beyond Riot, I really just like their approach to building a knife. So I'm not saying that one has a better quality or QA necessarily. Oh, GK, Grandma Knives. But uh, I had handled and unboxed on the channel the prior model to this. Uh, what's the best way in here? Which was the um, uh, the Grandma Knives Rust. There's a great example of how not to unbox your box. Uh, luckily, we avoided catastrophe there. And um, was very impressed, but it was not quite what I liked. And it was just weird to me that it was like kind of uneven in its aesthetic, where it had the like lock side, what's the term for it? Um, milling and not on the uh, not on the show side. Uh, kind of unique and cool and memorable, I suppose. I'm mentioning it right now, right? But I noticed with this Russ EDC, which box and nice little packaging here for coming internationally, he was uh, able to bring out quite a few new milling options, which is really cool. And there it is. Look at that beauty. And I really like the size. Feels pretty similar to like a brown mini FSD or something like that. If you watch the channel or know and handled that in the past. Oh, very nice on the action. Front flipper you don't want to go too high on apparently. Nice little... Uh, Ooh, nice rollout action. I went with the stone washed in hindsight. I wish I had gone with the, uh, he offered a uh, satin milled grind. It does look like it's hollow ground, which is really nice. The action is good. It's not like gonna knock you off your socks or anything like that, but it's very good. You got a nice internally milled, let's see if I can get some zoom going here. My phone is going wackadoo for some reason so sorry for the um for the issues there it kind of looks like uh yeah there you go hopefully you can see that now nice internal milling to uh keep it lighter let's uh do some quick measurements on this guy just see what it weighs 3.9 ounces so not too heavy actually feels even a little lighter than that. Really cool how you have the uh, see-through on the pivots here. Just a very unique look with those pivot barrels being very generous there. And then let's check out the, uh, that's funny, just keeping it really simple there. Check out the blade length and everything. Just over three inches. So it's still a pretty sizable knife for, for all intents and purposes. Like three and a quarter almost inches, just call it three and an eighth to be safe on a three and a quarter blade, about three and an eighth or so of cutting edge with a 7.625 overall length. So that's a really nice, nice size. Just see if we have any blade play, none at all. My understanding is uh, he had all of these shipped to his house to QC and uh, or house or shop or whatever he has out there. Maybe it's a shop in his house, I don't know. And uh, did all that QC himself. Really like the pocket clip. It's gonna give that a quick test in the pocket. Oh yeah, super nice. I have some kind of thicker pockets here and it went in there no problem. So it has a very nice like thickness to the mill like milled pocket clip where it's not too strong, but not too soft. That's like just about perfect for me. The action's good. It's a little interesting like when I go to drop it, it kind of sticks at first and then it releases and I'm not quite sure what is causing that. 
not gravity drop shut, but maybe with adjustment it could be, hard to say. That could be related. It's interesting, right? It just sort of sits there for a second and then it falls. The Something this would be similar to would be like the feeling of like an Oz Roosevelt, not quite as satisfying. But it, I do find it a little more satisfying than the prior model. Just like the prior model though, the closing action is a little muted. And I'm not sure what it is about that. I don't know if it's this pivot or what, but it's just a little muted when it closes. Um, and I can't quite explain that. I'm very sorry, by the way, for the uh, constantly um, adjusting. And unfortunately, I can't zoom in. There's something just wrong with my camera right now. But look at that. Magna Cut number 144. So they're all numbered. Really cool. Let's see if there's anything else on here. Really would love to zoom in on these details for you because the milling is quite nice. It's nothing like groundbreaking, but it's very good for the price of, I don't know, I paid maybe 300 bucks for this knife. Um, and you got the multiple deployment models, the nice rollout, the detents just enough that you get like, you're not gonna have an issue, like it's not gonna fail but it's not so hard that you can't roll it out. Like there's a little pop there when you try and roll it out, but so you got four deployment models there, which everyone's a fan of having an extra deployment model in case you need it, right? Nice, I very rarely buy knives made in China now, um, but this one caught my eye just on the design like Kane in general, very responsive and just seems like a really cool knife maker. He's been doing some more custom work, it seems like lately, which is cool. Like the thumb studs, like the Magna Cut, and just seems like a very good overall design. So if you're looking for like the highest quality possible $300 knife, like pretty hard to beat something like this where you've got a nice textured tie scale, a Magna Cut blade, a flexible deployment model is a really nice grip. I'm a big fan of this kind of like two finger, I don't know if you want to call that a choil, but like the two finger dip in here and then the taper on the end just feels so good in hand, wants to be used. So again, one of the things that I regret now getting it in hand, was, it's, it's fine, but like, I think the blade would just look a little better with that satin grind on it. I think that would just make it look a little more premium uh, than it does. But overall, definitely happy with the purchase and uh, fun to get a uh, something a little different on the channel here for a change. Um, so not sure if any of you picked that up, but interested to hear your thoughts if so. And that's all for now. Please feel free to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.